Uh, yes, hello, dears. This is the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective, and we are very happy and very honoured to have an opportunity to connect with you all, to have an opportunity to work with you and to speak with you about tone and sound. So we're going to ask you if you prefer to hear us this way or if you prefer to hear us this way. Of course. All right. So we'll keep going this way uh, because it does affect the tone and the sound. But that's all right. Uh, because you're still going to get the full force of it. We want to make sure you're hearing what we're saying, uh, and that's more important to us than anything else. So we're going to cover a lot of ground tonight. And don't worry, because one of the ways that we work is to go off on a lot of tangents, and if you feel like somehow uh, we've gone so far off you're not sure where we started, don't worry, we're going to make our way back around. And we do this with intent, because we try to get you to think multidimensionally. Because if we present information in a very linear fashion, guess how you process it? You process it through the mind, the filter for the third dimensional version of reality. And it's linear. And the information that we're give you, giving you is anything but linear. All right, it is very multidimensional. So the first thing we want to do before we get into some of these topics is to get you heart centered to get you processing information through the multidimensional filter of the heart and get you out of the head. Because if you think of it this way, the head is like a sieve for information. The third dimensional mind cannot hold all the levels and the layers of the multidimensional perspective. So all the data just drops right on through because it's not refined enough. When you process information through the heart center, the multi-dimensional filter, the information is retained. It's very simple, it's very easy for you to process the information from that center. All right. So the first thing we want to do is get you in that space. It's very, very easy to do. It doesn't require hours of meditation. It doesn't require hours of ritual. All you have to do is think of something that puts a smile on your face. Now, how easy is that? So. We want you all right now to find an image and we suggest an animal or a place because they're both unconditional. When you start to think about people, oftentimes there are programs that are running at the subconscious level that you are unaware of. All right, and that can change how you are vibrating. All right, especially if you're upset with someone and you're not aware of it. All right, or you may not have acknowledged it yet. But animals and places are pretty unconditional. So, if you can all find one, and let us know when you've got it. And take note of how you're feeling in your body. Have you all found an image? Yes. All right. Do you feel lighthearted, warm, tingly, expanded, uplifted, joyful? Any of those things? Yes. I feel magnetic. Yes, well, that's a good place to start. So what you're doing is tapping into unconditional love. You are tapping into the frequency of source energy. And when you do this, you put yourself in what we like to call a data tube, all right, or this giant tube of light, which is about six feet wide. And from within this field, you have access to all information. You can access your higher consciousness, you can access your guides, you can access the Akashic records, you can see solutions to problems. If you can't see why you keep recreating patterns over and over and over, put yourself in your heart center and then ask the same question. You'll get the answer. So this is also a good way to recharge your body if you're fatigued, if you're upset, if you're angry. Because what this also does is it's like plugging into a wall outlet where there is unlimited energy. When you're in stress, fear, worry, doubt, shame, blame, guilt, all those lower frequencies, the six foot wide tube shrinks down to about an inch wide. So there's not a lot of information that can penetrate and get through to you. So it's really important that you just try to be as consciously aware of the fact of where you're vibrating and if you're in one of those lower ranges to shift where you are. 
Now, the reason we're spending time giving you this exercise is before you start working with tone and sound, you want to make sure you get yourself heart centered. All right, and we're going to do a little bit of toning later after the break. Uh, we're going to uh, run the chakras, we're going to run the energetic centers, we're going to see what we can get vibrating here. But for now, uh, we just ask that you get yourself heart centered. Intent is one of the most important things when it comes to creation, when it comes to working with tone and sound, your intent will shape the sound itself. Your intent will modify the vibration that is generated through tone and sound. Now, when you first start working with tone and sound, it's not gonna sound pretty. We don't want you to think that this is the same thing as singing because it's not. What you are doing is vibrating matter through sound and the intent, whether it is to manipulate the body, whether it is to alter your energetic state, whether it is to manipulate other matter, the intent is gonna shape the sound and that is gonna literally push matter. If you think of it like a giant uh, snow plow, all right, as you are pushing, that's the tone, the plow is stacking up the snow, and that's matter, and that's how matter is generated, all right? You are condensing energy so tightly that it seems to be solid. And sound is what was used as we created worlds, uh, as some of the higher collectives created worlds, they utilized tone and sound to do so. That's why in some of your uh, religions, they talk about the seed sounds, they talk about sound being the origin, because it is. That's how we generate matter. That's how we create our intent. Now, when you get to the higher realms, it's not quite the same thing because we don't experience sound in the same way, because literally, as you're creating that frequency of sound, you process it through your ears, through the vibration of matter, but that frequency as it is perceived in the higher dimensions is light. All right, when you get down to density, it changes and it alters to sound and what you perceive as being sound. But really what it is, it's light. And as we go here a little bit later, we're gonna start talking about the language of light and understanding it. The language of light is just a universal way of communicating that absolutely all beings in the universe understand, including you. You may not remember it when you try to pull it through the third dimensional filter, but as you process those tones and sounds, uh, or the language of light as it is translated into tone and sound as you're processing it through the third dimension, as you process it through the heart filter, that part of you remembers and understands exactly the information that is being imparted. And there are more and more beings who are working more and more with the language of light because you are spending more time in your heart centers and you can process it better than you could 10 years ago or even 20 years ago. There were a few of you who, who got it because you weren't aware at all of your heart center. You were still using the mind for absolutely everything and the data that you were getting through the heart center was all at the subconscious level. You weren't pulling it in through the conscious mind. So, when we look at dimensional structure, dimensions are structured very much like music. You have breaking points, if you will, or octaves within dimensions, dimensional ranges, uh, just like you do with music. And when you work with dimensions, there are just different games going on, there are different games being played. All right, Each dimensional range has different rules, it has different regulations, it has unique properties about it. It's a bit like playing uh, one sport or another. All right, that's the analogy we always like to use because you all can get that. There are certain rules that you have for basketball, there are different rules that you have for baseball, and they're very different. And you go to the one that you enjoy. And it's the same thing with dimensions. You incarnate to a dimension that you enjoy. 
And Tone and Sam has uh, been utilized uh, not only in the higher realms for manipulating matter, for altering structure, but it's also been used on this planet. This was a game of dissension and reascension. So you all started a lot higher in vibrational frequency. There were civilizations on this planet that had a lot of knowledge and awareness about who they are, who they were, depending on whether you're looking at it from the linear perspective or the multi-dimensional one, because guess what, they're still experiencing that at the same time. So what you consider to be your past is actually going on concurrently with your now. Everybody take a nice deep breath. <laughs> So there were civilizations on your planet that knew where they were from. And we want to talk just a little bit here about Lemuria. Lemuria was seeded by beings from the Lyran star system. They knew that they were multidimensional. They were not what you would consider to be human, at least not in the early stages. Many of them uh, came at a higher frequency and then lowered their vibration into density. That was the game dissension because you wanted to see how low you could go and then come back out of it you wanted to see what it was like to have feelings and emotions and a solid body to have a linear perspective and so the process began and it was a step process and from the human perspective or from the beings incarnational perspective uh, it wasn't really something that you were aware of. Just as now, you're not aware that that's the game being played. But at the soul level, at the, at the universal game level, all of you knew that this was what was afoot. So in Lemuria, you grounded yourselves into denser and denser physical vehicles. Up until the end of the Lemurian civilization, sound and tone was richly used throughout the entire culture. It was something that absolutely everyone was aware of uh, from the time that you were a wee child. It was simply how you worked with the universe, simply how you operated. And when you wanted to create something, you would get together as a group with intent, set the intent, and then work as a group to tone all right. You would also work with harmonics and overtones to create all these different structures because you're vibrating things at different rates, pushing matter in different ways. Not only could you generate and pull things into being, but things that were already existing in the physical realm, you could alter. All right. When, when you look at structures such as the Great Pyramid, that was constructed, manipulated, and uh, the architecture was designed through tone and sound and the understanding of sacred geometry and, and working with tone and sound. Now, when you work with tone and sound and sacred geometry, and we're going to talk about this just a, just a wee bit here, and then we'll come back to it. You can alter the intent and the structure by utilizing sacred geometry, by utilizing the base structures, uh, by utilizing circles, triangles, squares, because as sound resonates, as it bounces off, it creates form differently when you have and hold the intent of a particular sacred geometric pattern. It alters the vibrational signature to it. So, not to go too far off on a tangent, we're gonna kind of come back to Lemuria here. You had a great understanding of how to use it. It was part of everyday life. To be without it would be very, very strange. And also, at that time, there were beings, if you want to call them the Mer people, they were also operating and working with tone and sound, but they were doing it through a slightly different medium, working with water rather than air. And under the water, the Mer people created the most amazing tones and sounds that were completely intoxicating because it was so different because of the vibration and the, and the, uh, the way that uh, 
the tones and sounds were generated and the medium through which they were being broadcast was so different from those living on the land that it was very, very seductive. And it was like being in the celestial realm. The celestial realms in the higher dimensions, they all have their own vibration to them. All vibrations can be seen and processed again through the language of light, which you would interpret as a human being as sound. So they all have their own tones, they all have this, their own notes. And as they blend together, they create this amazingly beautiful symphony of music. And the Mer people were also very good at uh, playing within these spheres, creating these spheres of tone and sound. And that's where a lot of your myths of the siren, the call of the siren, comes from in your mythology. That these are the Mer people working with the tones and sounds, and it is literally like the call home. It's, it's calling you back, just as uh, the celestial realms to the stars, where you came from, where you descended from, and it, uh, it reminded you of home when you were in the descended form. Make sense? You're following us there? Is everyone awake? Yes. <laughs> All right. Take a nice deep breath. So when you get to Atlantis, it's very much the same situation. The two civilizations coexisted for quite a while in the, in the early days of Atlantis, in the high days, if you will, of Atlantis. Atlantis went through three great rises and falls. And when you get to the last one, that's what most of you think of when you, when you recall Atlantis. But the ability to use tone and sound and specifically harmonics and specifically working with the human voice was utilized again on a daily basis. Most of the knowledge was passed along through the priestly uh, caste. So there were beings whose sole job was to work with tone and sound to realign the vehicle because again there was the understanding that everything that happens within the physical vehicle first starts in the energetic template in your energetic being. They understood this. So rather than do something to the physical body, you alter the frequencies of the energetic body and as a result, because the templates change, the body changes. The same thing you do today, you're learning and remembering how to work with the tone and sound to alter the matter. You're doing it by creating frequencies that can either replace, and we'll talk about this a bit later too, that either replace or inter create an interference pattern to break up. And you can think of it just like an ultrasound with kidney stones, all right, where you are sending high frequency waves and they're going to disturb the lower ones until they dissipate. And it was the same thing, the same thing working with your body. You do that at the energetic level. So in Atlantis, it was, it was used quite a bit. Uh, to work alongside crystals. Tone and sound were used with crystals. The tone and sound can activate a crystal. A crystal holds a particular uh, constant vibration to it because of its structure. And when you use tone and sound, it can activate it so that it starts to vibrate. If you have a room full of tuning forks and you strike the A note, all the other A's in the room are going to start to vibrate through the laws of resonance. It's the same thing in your energetic field. When you strike a vibration of an emotional nature, so let's say you're striking the vibration of um, abandonment, when you strike that vibration, anywhere else that you're holding it, in any of the records, in any of your lifetimes, because you are storing within your energetic field all of the experiences of all lifetimes, of all your genetic line. It's all in there, so anywhere that, that issue is stuck. So that aspect of you over here who is living 500 years ago, who feels abandoned by its mother, uh, his mother in that lifetime, and you haven't dealt with that as that being, that shows up in your energetic field. As that being starts to work through it and learn how to resolve all of his judgment, so that he doesn't feel abandoned anymore, that 
information is transmitted to your field. And so he's found a way to integrate that abandonment. So if he's chosen not to deal with it, and you in this lifetime have found a way to let go of all of your judgment surrounding abandonment and see that you're never really abandoned, that you're always connected to someone or all things, when you find the process of integration, when you let go of all of that judgment, you put into your field, and if you want to think of it like an antiviral software program, you put into the field the information on how to do it. So you let go of it in that record, anywhere else it exists. So if that A note is anywhere else in your field, you wipe it out. All right, you stop it from resonating. In essence, what happens is the process of integration creates an interference pattern so that it stops vibrating, it becomes neutral. All right, the same thing can happen with tone and sound. You can create such a sound that will create an interference pattern so that something will stop vibrating. All right, and then you can replace it with another vibration, with another tone and sound, creating a new patterning. Are you all with us so far? Mm -hmm. So in Atlantis, you have the understanding of how to utilize tone and sound to manipulate matter as far as the body went. You also have the understanding of how to, um, how to manipulate matter to create buildings, to build things up, to literally create energy that could cut through stone. You also, as collectives in the priestly caste, got together and utilized tone and sound, unfortunately, to manipulate others' thought forms. That was the dark side of using tone and sound. Most of you who have played that side of the game understand that everyone has free will. You've played the dark side. You understand the consequences of trying to manipulate others. Most of you have also played the other side of it where you yourself were manipulated. All right, so there's no right or wrong here. You've all played good, you've all played bad, uh, you've all played light, you've all played dark. Sometimes you all have a very difficult time when we tell you that because you think, you know, I don't want to be dark. But those are some of the most interesting lifetimes and those are the ones in which you learn the greatest lessons. So they can feel a bit challenging as you are processing and integrating the information. Uh, sometimes you're carrying guilt and shame and blame, but you're able to work through it. It's a bit like playing cops and robbers when you're little. It's boring to play the good guy every day. So you get up one morning and you ask your friend if you can trade rules. And your friend says, of course. And that's what happens before you incarnate. You ask your friends, who will play this role with me? And they say, I will. And so it is. So oftentimes the people who do the most dastardly things to you are the ones who at the highest levels love you the most. Take a deep breath. So as you all start to open up to utilize tone and sound a bit more, one of the things that's going to get activated, and we can tell you as we're looking at each and every one of you, is persecution. Because at some point... Each of you has been persecuted for using your voice. Persecution is one of those issues that is pervasive throughout the entire galaxy. And you are learning how to work with it so that you can share the information on how to release it with the rest of the galaxy. All right, do you all understand what we're talking about here? Yes. yes. So that can come in different ways. You're still persecuting each other to this day for having different religious beliefs, for having different opinions, uh, for saying what's on your mind. There's still all kinds of attacks that happen on a day-to-day -day basis, so it's deeply ingrained in mass consciousness. So many of you have played with uh, magic, played with the mystery school information before, especially in dark times as you try to hold it so that when Earth was ready, the information would still be readily available. And in the process, many of you lost your lives. That was a game that you were playing because you 
you wanted to know what persecution was like, what it was like to say what was on your mind and be punished for it. So right now we want all of you to sit with your feet flat on the ground. And we want you to envision a beautiful blue light, sky blue, on a crystal clear day. You can even imagine how crisp the air is and the color of the sky. We want you to envision a beautiful orb of blue light right in your throat chakra. And as you inhale, see that light growing brighter and stronger. We'd like for you to repeat after us. I forgive myself, I forgive myself. And, all and all others for all wrongdoings, for all wrongdoings. Done, unto me, done unto me and done by me. And done by me. <laughs> It was all for our learning experience. We want you to sit for just a moment with that beautiful blue light. We want you to affirm here with us now, it is safe to use my voice. I use my voice for the benefit of all. I use my voice for the highest good. I use my voice for the highest good. For myself and all others. For myself and all others. How good would that feel? Feel it in your body. Yeah. How amazing would it be to be able to use your voice clearly, openly, to say exactly what you felt coming from a place of compassion and love. To not be judged for what you had to say for not judging yourself for what you were thinking or saying. We want you to feel how wonderful it would be to just express yourself in your every thought with your voice. We want to leave you with one other affirmation here and it's fun to use my voice. It's fun to use my voice. <laughs> yes, it is. And we're going to use it tonight. So, uh, persecution is a big one. And what we encourage you all to do after you leave here is to start playing with tone and sound on your own. And we'll give you some exercises in the second half here, things that you can play around with, things that you can experiment with. And it doesn't matter. As we said, it doesn't, it's, it's not about sounding pretty. All right. It's about being able to express yourself, whatever's on your mind, the vibration, whatever it is that you want to create. And sometimes, especially if you're creating an interference pattern, if you want to break something up in your field, if you want to break up a habit, it's not going to sound pretty. It's going to feel like discord. It's going to sound like discord. It may sound a bit like nails on a chalkboard. All right. And that's all right. All right, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to necessarily be like a pretty little melody. So we want to stop right now before we get too far into things and see if you have any questions thus far. When I close my eyes, I see this pink color. I was trying to imagine blue and I couldn't do it. That's all right, because part of what you are working with is... Uh, <laughs> And we'll tell you, because you're seeing the hot pink color, it's because the part that you need to work with is working with planetary grid. And some of the things that you've done in other lifetimes that you've activated and worked with the planetary grid, so it is allowing you to bring in love from the planetary system so that you can have a release on that level. Yeah, the first thing I saw, see usually is when I close my eyes, is this white uh, figure, and I don't know if that's your reflection or something else. Well, um, the figure that you're seeing that, that we're looking at is your guide. And is your guide there to help you. Yes. All right. I have another question. Yes. Um, not too long ago and occasionally I just had the urge to make sounds. And, you know, no one was home and I was in my bed. And then sometimes I was in the car and I would just make these, you know, certainly not singing, 
but I just wonder, is, was it just automatically clearing or? Yes, because intuitively you all know what's required. So one of the things that we recommend, and we'll go ahead and give you some of these exercises rather than wait, is to start playing around. Just sitting down with yourself and playing with the tones and sounds and seeing how they resonate in your body. Where are they resonating in your body? When you make a note, do you feel it in your skull? Do you feel it in your solar plexus? Do you feel it in your thighs? Where in your body does that sound resonate? The first thing we'd always recommend is for you to create an intent. What are you sitting down to do? Are you just sitting down to tune into your own body? Are you sitting down to heal some part of yourself? Are you sitting down to access records? All right, you can even use tone and sound to open portals, if you will, because your alignment of your entire energetic body, when all of your chakras are open, guess what? You become your own vortex. And you can open up to inner dimensions. And so when you start using the tone and sound to get yourself aligned, you can open up a dimensional rift. So you can set your intent and then just start playing around and see what tones and sounds feel best. Use your intuition. All of you access your guides, your higher consciousness, the Akashic records, all of the time, but you're doing it at the subconscious level. As far as the conscious mind's concerned, you've got the volume turned down. All right, so now you're just turning it up. So if you're paying attention to where things are resonating, that's when you can, you know, you're, you're literally turning the volume up so that you can be aware of it. And it's going to seem like your imagination when you first start. Because how you connect with higher consciousness, how you connect with source energy through the third dimensional existence is through your creativity. So yes, it's going to seem like your imagination because that's the closest comparison you have to connection through source as you're filtering it through the mind. But the more you start to work with it, the more you're going to feel what's going on in your body. You're going to feel how things start to shift in your body when you start connecting with your guides. It's they're giving you indications of, uh, all right, go up with this note, change the vowel. You're going to start to hear them and feel them. And there is a subtle difference. It feels different than just you sitting there using your imagination. And it's easy enough for us to sit here and say it's a little harder because we have no way of really telling you what it feels like. One, because we don't have physical form. <laughs> We're beings of light. So we rely on Wendy's interpretation uh, as she explains it to us. As we connect with you, we get a sneak peek of what things are like in the physical realm. That's the only time that we get to really feel and experience through your dimension is when we channel because the only other way that we can experience the third dimension is to incarnate into it. And we're not doing that. We're incarnated into the ninth. All right? So the only way that you can really perceive what the ninth dimension is like is when you channel and connect with us. All right? Otherwise, it's like watching something, watching a play or a movie. You get a sense of it, but you don't really know what it's like until you do it. So you'll start to play around with it and you'll get a sense that when I make this note, I feel my heart expand. Or when I do this particular series, I feel energy coming up through my feet and going all the way through the crown of my head. So you just start playing around. There's no right or wrong here. But set your intent and that will give you some direction. It will tell your subconscious where to take you. Ask your guides for help. Ask them to direct you based on your intent of what it is that you want to create for yourself. Do you want to create health and well-being? Do you want to create an expanded sense of your body? Your guides, when you ask, get so excited because it's like your own personal cheerleading squad and they can give you everything that you want to know. You've got free will and if you don't ask, they can't give it to you because we don't want to interfere. So you've got to ask. Ask us for assistance and, and trust us that we will give it to you until you get it or you no longer want it. Sometimes you may be a bit annoyed at getting all the confirmation, especially when you're resisting doing something. When you've asked us for help and we're telling you what you need to do and you're really not interested in doing that, we'll keep giving it to you until you get it or you say, I no longer want it. See how we work. 
So play around, experiment, see how it works within your body. Now there are certain vowels that you're going to feel a bit more in all of the energetic centers. Vowels are, if you want to consider it the breath of God, that's one name that's given to it, all right? And consonants are breaking it up, creating segments and intervals to it. So if you want to think about one breath ending and another beginning, that's what con consonants are, are, are pretty much doing. So you can just stick with the vowels to allow the energy to run. And uh, as you're going up, as you're starting with a root chakra, you're going to use E. All right. Then O for uh, the second chakra. Om for the third. A for the heart. U for the throat. N or U for the third eye. So you can hum. Mm. And then for the crown, you're going to go with E again. All right. So these are the vowels that we recommend. They're not the only ones, but it's a good place to start. And see how they feel. See how they feel in your body. And then you can also envision the colors. You can envision the colors of the chakras as you're creating that tone. Remember, from the third dimensional level, the language of light is sound. What happens is what you perceive as light and what you perceive as sound gets split because this is a dimension of duality and diversity. So things are being split apart. What you perceive as light is separate from what you perceive as sound. When you get into the higher realms, it's all the same. It's vibration. We make no distinguish, distinguishment between them. So when you visualize the color with the sound, it's putting the two back together again. And it can help you to focus the energy and to help you focus your intent. Because when you're working with the, with the visual side of the brain, the creative side of the brain, it keeps you connected to source energy. The minute you start analyzing it, it puts you back into the third dimensional mind. So while you're creative and visualizing, that keeps you heart centered. So if you're seeing the energy and you're making the tone, what does the energy do? What does the energy look like? Is the color bright and pure? Is it muddy? Is it flexed? So are there flecks of gold or silver or dark flecks in it? What does it look like? What happens when you start to make a tone? What happens when you change that tone, when you move it up? Does the color of it change? Does it grow brighter? Does it dim? So play around. Each and every one of you can, you can kind of experiment uh, what exactly happens. Now, if your intent is to work with the physical body, what you're typically trying to do is to get it as clear as possible. So you want to be able to envision this light growing brighter and stronger and anything that is dense, anything that is dark, is dissipating as you're creating the tone. So if the tone that you're making isn't really doing much, change the tone or change the vowel. Right? Change the note or change the vowel that you're using and see what happens. And keep making it until it alters and starts to become clear in your mind's eye. All right. For those of you who have a challenging time visualizing what's going on, you can feel what's going on. Some of you who are clairsentient are feeling things in your body, so sometimes it's a little harder for you to see. What does it feel like? Does that area of your body feel like it's tingling more? If you're tingling, that means you're getting more energy in, and your body, your cells are vibrating and increasing their frequency so that they can hold that energy. And how you sense that in your body is tingling. So if you're tingling, don't worry. There's nothing wrong. It means you're doing something right, that you're bringing in more energy. Take a nice deep breath. How are you all feeling so far? Great. Great. All right. So those are just a few of the exercises that you can kind of play around with. Now, when you work with tone and sound, 
specifically for healing, one of the things that we recommend is that you work with the human voice as opposed to necessarily an instrument. You can work with an instrument, but understand as matter is created, the intent is everything. The intent behind that creation affects the vibration of that object. So if you've got a crystal ball or you've got a violin or you've got a guitar, the intent of the person who made that, who carved that while they were working on it, that gets infused into the object. And that can affect the vibration of that instrument. It's much easier also when you're working with the human voice that you can adjust or modulate your voice to the exact tone that you need in order to create the effect that you want. It's much harder for you to do that with instruments. And that's why we always tell you that the human voice is the most potent tool that you've got. Now, your energetic field, and we're going to lump this together because there are all kinds of levels and layers to your energetic field. We don't really have to go into it. You really don't have to know it. We're just going to lump it all together, and it's your energetic field. You've got layers here, and there are a couple here that go through several different dimensions. You've got three through six, which is a template for your emotions. You've got another one that ranges from the seventh dimension to the ninth dimension, and then another one which is 10 through 12. We should mention that there are 12 dimensions, or at least that's how we break it up. You'll hear other people talk about uh, 144, and you hear all kinds of numbers. It's because they are breaking up these octaves and calling them a dimension in and of themselves. So we're kind of condensing it, because for all intents and purposes, from where you, you're sitting, and the experience that you're having, they're basically 12. All right? And there are va variations between each octave and different subsets of rules. But some will look at that and say that's a dimension. And that's why you get different numbers. But when you work with tone and sound, and specifically you are working with overtones and harmonics, what will happen is that as you start with that bass tone and you are, it's like you're splitting it and it goes up mathematically and we're not going to go too much into the mathematics of everything this evening but as you go up mathematically it continues to vibrate and it goes beyond your own range of hearing and continues up multidimensionally so it moves into other dimensions that vibration doesn't just stop when it gets to the edge of the third dimension. You keep going. So when you're working with tone and sound in your field, and specifically when you're working with harmonics, and you've all heard it when you hear the chants of the monks, all right? Uh, we often do it, especially at the beginning here. Uh, when uh, We're doing it right now with the voice where you hear it splitting, all right? So we're, we're playing, we're striking several different notes at once. Uh, it sounds a bit distorted as it comes through the microphone, but this is what we're doing with the voice. And it continues to vibrate up the scale. So when you work on your own body, you work through multiple dimensions. So anywhere that it exists in those multiple dimensions, you're clearing it out. You're not just working with this one dense body. How fabulous is that? Because a lot of times when you're working with healers, um, some of them will work with just one layer, some will work multi-dimensionally, uh, but we're, we're big fans of working with tone and sound. Now we want to go back to working with crystals for just a moment. We want to talk just a little bit more about Atlantis and the role of the crystal in Atlantis as well. Crystals, as we said, hold frequency. And in Atlantis, they were utilized just as you utilize your CDs or tapes today. Information was recorded in the crystal. So what one would do would be to take a crystal and to open it up. And you would do this by getting it to vibrate. The more it would vibrate, it would expand. You would see it expanding energetically as its own energetic field because all things have consciousness and all things have their energetic field about them. So you get it to vibrate and it would get bigger and bigger and bigger. 
and that in essence would be the equivalent of opening the crystal so that you could record information in there. Information was recorded through intent and it was also uh, recorded through tone and sound. So you would sit there, you would open up the crystal and then you would tone and sound and project through thought the vibration of the information that needed to be recorded. You can still see some of these crystals today. Some of them have etchings on them. A lot of times you'll see little triangles etched in there. There are different uh, geometric symbols and shapes, but the most common one you're going to see is the triangle. And when you come across one of these crystals, and typically they're clear quartz, but any kind of quartz was a good receiver for uh, amplification and for the storage of sound. Now, specifically, the Herkimer diamond was utilized to, like, to use as a laser. All right, it was one of the most powerful crystals that was utilized. So it could take a frequency and harness it and push it forward in a very refined way so that you could do, it would be like being able to do surgery, but it'd be like a scalpel, a scalpel as opposed to a butcher's knife. All right, it was very, very precise. But clear quartz was pretty much utilized to record the information in. And then when you're done, when you put everything in there, then you're going to create another tone, which is going to shut the field back down. You're going to get it to close. All right? And it was how you operated. Again, this is something that everyone knew. There were also machines that you could utilize uh, a bit the same way that you utilize your stereo, but that you could have someone project the information in, you would put it in the machine, and then you could once again access. So for those who weren't quite as adept at opening and closing that information, there were machines and there was technology that could do the same thing. It would use tone and sound to open the crystal and then uh, you could receive the projection of thought. And you're moving towards this again. All right, you're moving towards utilizing your thoughts, being able to share information quite easily and being able to utilize tone and sound to manipulate the energy in your body and expand yourselves and to also share information. Right now, most of the tone and sound that's being used on the planet as far as music goes, unfortunately, is being used to control and manipulate. Um, it's not uplifting. And the intent of the person who's creating it while they're singing the song, all of that's recorded right in there. So when you listen to a song, you pick up the emotional intent. So along with the tone and the sound is an emotional carrier wave. This is why another reason why we say that working with the human voice and tone and sound is so much more potent because if, you've got, if you're a healer and you're working with tone and sound, your intent that's behind making that sound gets picked up as a carrier wave along with that frequency by the person that you're working on. So if your intent is for health, healing, vitality, well-being, perfection, connection to divine source energy, the person receiving a hearing or experiencing that sound is able to pick up all of that information. If you're listening to a piece of music which is talking about abuse or depression or sadness, that person, as they are performing, they're putting that emotion into the vibration of the music and when you listen to it you are plugging into that frequency that's why music is so powerful it can uplift you it can make you feel expansive it can put you in a new place within a matter of moments and you've all had that experience yes so we would recommend that you just be mindful of what you're listening to and how it makes you feel all right, if it's not uplifting you, then we'd recommend that you don't listen to it. All right, you find something that makes your heart sing. You find something that makes you feel good. All right. So, any other questions so far? Uh, yes. My trying to visualize these um, uh, light blue clouds, I generally don't have a problem visualizing it, but here I can't get rid of that. Statue. It looks like an Egyptian statue with the uh, with the uh, thing I had dressed. And I can't get rid of it. Um, am I to get rid of it or? Take a nice deep breath. You're very activated right now. 
So uh, what you're tapping into is another lifetime in which you utilize this skill and this ability. And um, it was a bit of a traumatic lifetime. So this is coming up and this is getting activated as you're trying to open up that throat center. That lifetime is one of the things that's being stored in that, in that energetic center, this blockage. So you're having the memory to allow you to release the frequency. Um, in that particular lifetime, it was a dis, uh, you were very disillusioned with those who were in power and that they were misusing it and you were very, uh, shall we say, naive, all right? And it taught you discernment, but at a cost because it was very disappointing to find out that those that you held in such high regard were not doing uh, what they said they were doing and not utilizing their skills, gifts, and abilities for the benefit of all. They were doing it for themselves and for the accumulation of power. So there's a bit of grief that we're seeing that's in there. Well, that's what I see this lifetime too, all around me. Yes. So just keep breathing as we're going here. We are continuing to work on you. Everybody, we want everybody to take a deep breath because you're all getting very activated. Can you all feel the energy in the room? Yes. yes. All right. Because persecution and the abuse of power, especially around tone and sound, because it's such a potent uh, tool, is active in all of your fields. So if you personally haven't done it, we'll tell you that you're plugging in or you have, you have created an imprint or an overlay where that's happened. Imprints and overlays are lifetimes that you personally didn't have, mm. but you wanted the information about what that experience was like and so you put it into your field and for all intents and purposes it was your life you walked that life it's just one of the constructs of the game of how you all set it up and you use imprints and overlays to give you an example that's why you've got so many people who say they were cleopatra or napoleon because not everybody can be a leader just through the simple numbers of uh, the experience so what you do is you take that information about what it's like to be a leader, to oversee an entire country, and you put that into your records because you want to know what that feels like. So when people tap into that information, from their perspective, yes, they were that person. Where we're at, we can see whether things are imprints or overlays or whether they're actual experiences, but it really doesn't matter one way or another from where you're standing. So just take it as your own. But you've all had at some level a lifetime which is similar and that you are all opening up your throat chakras. This is what this time is about as you're going through this process of ascension to start speaking your truths. You have all been very controlled and very manipulated uh, as far as mass consciousness goes. And this is the time where you're speaking your truths, using your voice, and so you're clearing anything that's standing in the way. And tone and sound and working with it is a great way to clear it. Don't be surprised that when you start working with yourself, you might become a bit weepy. Uh, you, might, you might not even have a memory, but the way that we like to describe it is that you're leaking. All right, so you're crying, but there's no emotion attached to it. Have you ever had that experience? Yeah. Uh, you're processing energy through your body. That's what you're doing. Don't judge it, just go with it. Because you're getting it out, and that's the whole point. So if you're feeling something, Allow yourself to be present with it rather than suppressing it. All right. So, uh, if you're in a public place and you feel like you really can't process it, make sure that you try to take some time for yourself and allow yourself the opportunity to explore whatever's coming up. We understand that sometimes things come up and you don't feel like it's an appropriate space to get into it. Uh, you know, you're in the middle of the grocery store. Something may get triggered. You don't feel like you can sit in the aisle and cry. That's all right. Go back to your car. <laughs> Allow yourself to process. Allow yourself to tone and sound to help that vibration to intensify so you can get it up and out. See how that works? All right. It's already vibrating. It's already present. So you're just amplifying the signal by utilizing the tone and the sound. But you all have those lifetimes of persecution and that's part of what you're doing here tonight and what we're working on you with is helping you to open up that chakra. I have a question. Yes? Um, I have a question of the tones and sounds of languages on our planet. 
Um, like the tone and sound of American English sounds different from the tone and sound of British English yes. and other languages like French, Spanish, <laughs> yes. etc. So does that tone and sound of that particular language influence the mass consciousness of those groups of people? Very much so. Parts of our world? Very much so. The tones and yes, the, yes, the tones and sounds of the different cultures are a reflection of the vibration of that cultural experience. So they are carrying within them the experience of all of that genetic line, and how they utilize words, how they utilize tone, how they utilize sound is a reflection of that vibration, and it continues to get uh, projected. So if you've got someone who's done work on themselves and they've shifted their vibration, their tone and how you experience it is going to be very different. Uh, you may have heard some languages which sound very angry. Yes. Yes. All right? And that's because the people have a lot of frustration. All right? That's built up, and that comes through the tone and the sound. Then you've got others where it's... it's uh, a language that's got a very soft lilt to it. It sounds very relaxing, it's very soothing, and the general energy of the people is more laid back. That they appreciate life, that it's not such a fast pace, that things aren't quick and hard. So how you hear other languages is a direct correlation to the issues that's being held in that genetic line. If I may add, we, that's known and it's called the uh, modes and different keys. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you start it at a certain key, the vibration is different and the, it, it's part of the culture that she's talking about. Yeah. And if you've got someone who comes from a particular genetic line and they're raised in another country, then you get another level or layer of energy that it's, uh, again, they've got the genetic line stuff, all right, and then they've got all the cultural stuff that they have taken on through their experience. So their dialect is different than someone who is living perhaps in another country having the same genetic line or similar genetic line, but having a different cultural experience. All right, so all of that colors, and your voice will change. Your voice will change as you change, as your vibration change. Your register, where your voice sits. Uh, there, if you get adept enough, you can listen to someone's voice and see what tones and sounds are missing and you can tell exactly what issues they have in their body. They're not utilizing specific tones and sounds because if they did, it would activate that issue and they would have to clear it. All right, So they're not using the full range of their voice. You've heard people who are talking way up here and it sounds like their voice should be much deeper and centered. It's because of emotional issues. All right, so there are those on this planet who are adept at it, who study working with tone and sound, who study working with the human voice, and they can, they can also record and listen uh, and you can see what's missing. And they can tell by listening to you what your issues are. All right, as you're expressing yourself vibrationally. The vibration is missing all right, if it's, you know, if you're missing anger, fear, guilt, shame, that's wonderful. But if what you are missing is self-love, self-acceptance, that can also be heard through the tones and the sounds that you use because that vibration is not present as you express yourself. That type of work is being done now uh, through entrainment, it's called. Yes. And you uh, become aware of the other person's voice. And you find, let's say, in a heart, the, uh, the note, and through the note you connect with them. And if you need to get them out of, let's say, a depression, then, then you go into higher notes. Yes, yeah, so what happens, yes, with entrainment, if you, the, lower, the lower note is going to increase to, uh, in general, the law of entrainment. If you've got two frequencies that are vibrating, at different rates. The lower one's going to increase to reach the higher one. All right? As long as the higher one's strong enough. If the, high, if the higher one's very, very weak, then it's not going to be able to hold its own frequency. But when you work with entrainment, literally when you connect and you find and you're working with another person, if you find that two of you are making the exact same note, all right? And 
sometimes you can be slightly off and you're going to feel it. When you connect, it feels as if you're having a blending. That you feel that it's one voice and you're not sure if the, the sound is coming out of your mouth or theirs. It's going to feel very, very different. And you can play around with this uh, with others uh, as you make that tone. And when the voice blends together, you disappear. You become part of the collective and you're no longer an individual. And yes, you can work with other beings. You can hold frequencies for them. Whether you're using the voice or not, you can hold a frequency that they can then come up and match. Uh, you're doing this for people all the time. When, when you're praying for someone who's not well, you are sending them a vibration. You are sending them a frequency and they are able to tap into it. It's much easier because you're saying, here it is. Here's where it is. Here's where to find it. Another way we like to say it is you're telling them what, what station it's on. You're saying, here's the station with the information that you're looking for. Tune in. Here it is. So you can do, th do all of that. Um, we'll take one more question before we take a nice if, little break here. If you're working with that, with the intention of helping others, uh, is there a way to uh, open up to higher uh, energies so that they can help you through the process? Yes. So get yourself heart-centered uh, with the exercise that we gave you in the beginning here and set your intent that you want assistance from the beings of the highest frequencies of light and love to assist you. But really when you get yourself in that space of unconditional love, there is no higher vibration. You are already connected with source energy. And you're projecting that love, that unconditional love towards the person who needs the energy. And you can't force them to take it, all right? But what you do is bathe them in the vibration of the frequency. They're being surrounded by it. And that's what your guides do for you all the time. That's what we do. And as much as we would like to help you make transitions when we see you in pain and staying in that vibration, you have free will and we have to honor that. So all we can do is show you the frequency or another perspective, but you've got to make the choice to see it and move to it. Does that help? Yes. All right. So we're going to go ahead and take a slight little break here. And when we come back, we're going to start with just a little bit of toning to get you utilizing your own voice. We've talked enough about it, so now we want to get you moving. And don't worry, we already see some of you, the little, little wheels are turning. Uh, it's not going to sound pretty, don't worry. All right, so if you're not a singer, don't worry. We're just going to get you utilizing the voice, and that's the only point. We're not trying to harmonize here, all right? So no worries there. So uh, we'll take about 15 minutes, and we'll be back. 